So one thing I really started to enjoy the last couple of years is dot art. I started before COVID and I wanted to share some of the things I've learned uh, just to give you some tips. So uh, when we're doing dot art, we could really start with a pen or the back of a pencil. You could use the back of a pen here, it's rounded and begin using it. But generally we use two types of uh, tools. We have the flat dots, which give us a nice consistent, we'll make a dot, dip it in, make a dot, dip it in, and you'll have a consistent um, consistent shape. The other thing are the rounded uh, tools. And the thing about them is we can create, we can dip it in, make one dot, and keep using that same tool without re-dipping it, and it will just make a smaller and smaller dot. And I'll demonstrate that. But I wanted to talk first about how to mix the paint. Uh, you know, when you get the acrylic paint, it's too thick to do dot art. For example, if I were to just pour it out and try to do some dot art here, let me show you what you're going to get. And, you know, at the time I didn't watch any videos or even when I did, I, it was hard to find the videos that really explained it. Um, Here's the paint by itself. It's it's much too thick, and you're just going to get blobs. So one thing I did try to do is use uh, pouring paint, and I found that that was actually way too thin. It could work for some things, um, but it tended to not make a nice even circle. It would run. So I found the best thing is to actually just mix my own paint. And when I do that, typically I'll use a toothpick. I don't know why it really mixes it better. It's sort of like mixing um, when you're eating sushi and you're mixing the um, wasabi. So when you're mixing wasabi, you actually don't want to put a lot in at a time, a lot of water at a time. That's the key to getting it smooth and consistent. So the next time you're eating sushi, you could sort of do the same thing we're doing here. Now I use a water bottle and you just start to get a feel for it. Let me, I'll show you some consistencies of different, um, too much water, too little water, but you know, eventually you learn, okay, this much, maybe I'll need eight sprays, but every water bottle is different as well. So you kind of have to play with it and get used to what's good for you. So putting a bit of water in, I probably put too much, you start to mix it up. Like I said, you actually want to put a little bit at a time. I should have done that, but it's still mixing up pretty well here. And eventually you can see the water and you could see that it's not mixed with the paint. You'll see like a cloudy, dirty water. So you know that it's not mixed completely. And we'll just keep going here again. It's a lot like wasabi. Now, what I mean by not putting too much at a time, for example, let me put this right here. Let's try that again. I probably would have put less and then started mixing. So maybe spray a couple pumps and then start mixing. And it really starts to, um, spread the paint out a bit so that it doesn't clump up and then spray a bit more and it just takes time you know some people I've done this before where you all mix I'll mix it in a little jar and then keep the jar for a week or two or three so I don't have to keep mixing I'll do that with the colors I'll use often like I love gold the way it shines and sparkles so uh, I don't think that this is has enough water but I want to show you what it looks like I know this one doesn't have enough water for sure so this one that I know for sure is too thick when I go to make a circle it's kind of okay but it's going to sort of clump it'll make a little nipple shape and sometimes it'll just smudge like that one And what I notice is it'll make this little Hershey kiss uh, shape. 
but it won't always stay perfectly even. So you could see that. So that will indicate that you have too little water and that the paint is too thick. Let me see this one. I'm pretty sure this one's too thick. So you can you can see it. It's it's sort of I don't know, not conforming to the pen. So you have to get a feel for you'll eventually kind of see and be able to feel it the more you work. So I'll add some more water. You know, if you ever over water, you can either add a little bit more paint or just let it sit. It'll dry the water out after a while. And you kind of want a watery consistency, but not running. You don't want you don't want the paint to bleed when you're drawing. So you know, I don't know if you could see. It kind of grabs a bit and goes up, but it doesn't stay very thick onto the um, onto the toothpick. So let's try it again. Now, when when I'm pressing down, I really want to go at a perpendicular angle, you know, 90 degrees to the paper, straight down and straight up. And that takes a little while to get used to. Oops, I guess I missed it there. Let me try it again. And I would say I might need a little bit more water in this one. Let's go to, uh, that That got wet from my spray bottle. Let's go to a place that's not wet. Now the other thing I noticed is your medium, whether you're using paper or canvas, will matter. So this might be good for canvas, but for paper, it might still be a little bit, a um, little bit too thick, but you're starting to get a really nice ball, rounded, let me add maybe one more spray since there's not a lot of paint in here. So it is kind of an art. You have to get used to what it really looks and feels like. And, you know, it doesn't take too long to get the hang of it. You know, if you're going to do this consistently once or twice or more a week, you really get a feel for it. So let's try it again. Maybe I'll use a thicker tool and you can kind of see how it's kind of you could see it's it's not dripping but it's going it's sliding down and it would drip if I left it long enough so you don't want it hanging on to the tool but you don't want it just falling off and dripping and that's a pretty good one I prefer that rounded shape I like the way it looks so Here's one that's kind of medium, maybe um, you can see this, the thickness. If we look here, it clumps. It's not really rolling off. It's not too, too bad, but it won't really make a perfect circle when it's doing that. Plus, again, on the center, you're going to get that smashed Hershey's kiss. So that gives you an idea of how to mix the paint and you know some different colors might need a little bit less or a little bit more water because uh, each one's using different chemicals so let's take a look you could make these great circles with the flat tools and consistent so for example if I put it next to it it should look really close to the same now you could see If there's a little bit of water where it's not mixed, so a little bit of the water is not completely mixed in, it won't give a great edge. So you you you, you do you want to make sure. Here's what I mean by too much. You can see here the whiteness of the the water, so that you can see that it's not mixed in. And so when that gets on the tool. Let me show you. It's also going to mess things up. So I don't know 
know if you could see it very well, but on the edge here, that water just makes it not a perfect circle and it sort of runs. That for sure you could tell is way too much water, it hasn't been mixed completely. So next let's talk about um, the difference between this and the rounded tool, this one. So when you take this rounded tool, it allows you to make progressively smaller circles without having to re-dip the paint. So let me make sure I've mixed that extra spray. I don't want to see any little cloudy white water. I don't want to see that cloudy water or runniness. So this one I've mixed in pretty good. And when you dip it in, again, it's important you're going to have to go straight down, perpendicular, 90 degrees. So if this is your paper, you're going to do that. And again, it'll just take practice, you know, use use some paper and you could just actually just practice dots in a row or you can make a shape and practice. But here's what I mean. You're going to make a dot. And then as you progress, it's going to get smaller and smaller without having to dip it. And so it allows you to really make that pattern very easily. So I haven't done the dot art in a while, but I just quickly did this the other day, or this morning, I mean. So when you're going this way and that way and getting smaller, for example, I've gone to the right. Now I want to go to the left. What we'll do is we'll re-dip it into the center one so that unless you want the same shape exactly the same. But if I wanted to go from that big one and make the next one that size, what I'm going to do is dip it back into this one so some of the ink comes off and then start going in the other direction. So those are the two things I wish I had known sooner that I sort of figured out over months and months of, of just playing with it. Some of my first paintings, the circles were a lot like that. Really I want them looking like that. Definitely don't want them looking like that. Really caked in. So when I was using the pouring paint, it really looked like this. So, you know, you might want that, it might, you might like it, but it's almost like a watercolor. So if you see from the side, I don't know how well I could do this. This good one here has a nice little lump to it. So when it dries, it's going to be rounded. Whereas this one that uses too much water is going to just be completely flat. So when I first started making them, my students, where I worked, they would they would enjoy touching the, the designs when you'd pass it around before COVID and everyone was touching them. And it's really like a, it's a painting, but it also has a 3D texture to it. So hopefully that introduction into how to mix the paint and um, what the difference is between the flat and the rounded tools are. And again, just play with it and have fun. And, you know, I'm hoping to start a club where I work at a high school because I know for whatever I can design, my students can do way, way better. I've never been creative and geometry has brought out that creative side. Um, and my mom loves the artwork. So even though I'm an adult, it's the kind of thing she'll put up on her fridge. So hopefully that helped a bit and good luck and have fun.